Today is provi providing the latest analysis on all the winds, the currents, whether it's safe to launch, and then once the balloon goes up, the tra trajectory that it will take. Whoa, gusty winds are taking that balloon down now. That's going to be a problem. The winds had calmed for a time about a half an hour ago and then there were delays in the other processes of getting ready a long delay oh there it is there's the decision to support the attempt for this morning that's the decision this is going to be off for today so tomorrow is problematic it's uncertain just what the weather will be they had the window for a short while. 
but the winds are a huge concern because this balloon is so big to carry Baumgartner aloft to that height, to the 120,000 feet that he was hoping to, uh, to reach before jumping from that balloon. Sorry, but Carson, uh, Kittinger. Keep it coming when you can. Kittinger looking defeated. And for Baumgartner, this has been an ordeal too because he was awakened at 2 o'clock this morning, came out here to the launch area. Attention on the net. This is Mission Control. This is word for Mission Control. 42, we're going to call a cancel for the mission today due to gusty winds. That was Mike Jacobs. He's the mission coordinator. And the board due to gusty winds and a very disappointed Felix Baumgartner. And there's there's Felix's mother. Hand up to the forehead. She's disappointed too. She's stepped out of mission control now. She's been inside mission control. First time she and uh, the senior Baumgartner, Felix Baumgartner, the father, have ever been outside of Europe. Came to watch their son go off today and now it's not going to happen. So there were many frustrating events through the day. You see Kittinger there shaking his head. First, we had a five-hour hold because the winds were just too brisk to attempt this launch. And as I say, it's extra sensitive because of the size of the balloon. There have been some practice jumps here earlier, and the balloon didn't have to be that big. But to get a balloon that size aloft, the winds have to be almost negligible. Up to two miles an hour, that's it. For 800 feet above the surface, it's just such a delicate process launching the balloon. So first there was a five hour weather delay. Then the winds calmed down and there was a brief window to get things going, but there were problems. They got uh, Baumgartner into the capsule, but then there was a radio problem. He has two radio systems in the capsule. And that's his only communication with Joe Kittinger. And one of those radio systems went down. Radio overheated. There may be other problems we don't know about. But one of the radios went down, and there was a lot of problem solving to try to do to see what was going on. They're outside mission control. Again, you see uh, Kittinger's family and about seven other friends from Austria who came for this event, disappointed, looking out on the ramp. And there's the high shot from a helicopter of the balloon inflated just as high as it's going to go. There is a backup balloon. There are not many balloons around this size, a balloon capable of carrying Felix Baumgartner up to that altitude. This balloon, by the way, is three times larger than any balloon that's ever been launched with a human being uh, being lifted aloft underneath it. So three times larger than any other manned balloon flight. That camera is inside the capsule. So you're seeing from inside the capsule now the crew as they begin the process of taking Baumgartner out. Manages a smile anyway. Execute. There is a backup balloon, I started to say. So uh, they are able to try again. The weather tomorrow is not for certain. One, two, seven, selected. There's, there's Baumgartner talking. Somewhat, uh, somewhat questionable tomorrow. And then it begins to deteriorate for a couple of days. That's why they were trying so hard to get this off today. But it was a combination of the problems, the long weather delay caused by winds that were no more than 17 miles an hour, uh, but 17 miles an hour is too great. That was about uh, at 700 feet off the ramp there. And the launch is just a very dicey moment. I think in this whole operation, if you said the jump would be the most uh, risky maneuver, the second most risky uh, exercise is the launching of the balloon. 
That's because that bubble starts to go aloft, then there's a long tether uh, for some 200 yards uh, beyond the balloon before it uh, uh, reaches the capsule. And so there's time while the balloon begins to ascend uh, for that rope to get taut, and only then the crane lets the capsule go, and it has to be gently lifted aloft. The problem there is that if it's not gently lifted aloft by the balloon, it could bang on the ramp or be dragged, bump along, and that would be very risky to the capsule and even more so to the occupant of the capsule, Felix Baumgartner. There again, a very disappointed Felix Baumgartner. Of the molecules crashing together, making a noise. For a human being, that probably wouldn't be the case because a human being is a lot smaller uh, than an aircraft, but also Baumgartner now getting in his personal trailer. I'm going to leave the ramp in a moment. But uh, back to the, uh, the sound barrier. The other reason that it might not be so difficult for a human being at that altitude would be the thinness of the atmosphere. The atmosphere up there where Baumgartner was planning to jump is only about one thousandth of the atmosphere at the surface of the Earth. Therefore, there are fewer molecules to bang together uh, when they're being compressed uh, by an object going faster than the speed of sound. So a lot of people, including the medical uh, doctor on uh, supervising this flight, felt that it might not be noticeable, certainly not to Baumgartner, uh, nor to the equipment that he was carrying, or to others, when he went through the sound barrier. The hope was, and uh, will continue to be, when this jump happens, seconds into the jump, 